Hi everyone, my name is Tommy. I'm the communications and community lead of Mangata Finance, an easy and secure decentralized trading platform for Ethereum and Polkadot. We recently made our announcement for Mangata X. It's a community owned exchange for experienced traders and experimental tokens on the Kusama platform. And since we made that announcement, we have seen a lot of new engagement on our Discord and other social channels. A lot of new community members have joined us and they started to ask questions. They wanted to understand Mangata, what it is about. But uh, if you have spent some time with Mangata, you realize that it's complex, that it's offering a lot of new things, a lot of new things to think about. And so we decided to create an overview for you. This is the video for the overview and you can also read it in the written format, which is called the Mangata Playbook. So this is the video for the Mangata Playbook part one. And we called it the Mangata Playbook begin with the end in mind. Because we are creating obviously a project, a decentralized exchange, and we want to be, we want it to be a successful platform that goes far into the future. And so we have to begin with the end in mind. We have to think it through from beginning to end to make sure it is getting a success. And the Mangata Playbook describes our current research, how far we've got into the issue and get us all of the most important points. And in this video, it will be 50 to 20 minutes long. You will get the complete framework. So you will learn what is the problem we are solving? What's our vision to solve it? What's our solution framework, aka the playbook, and how we split it up in technology, tokenomics, community, and the network. Yes, at the end, we will give you a roadmap of where we are and where we are currently going. Okay, let's start with the elephant in the room, with the issue. What's the issue? The issue is simple. DeFi is broken and a lot of people don't even know it yet. And we can, we can pinpoint the issue to two specific causes. And these are gas. Uh, two examples of these are increased network usage and rising token price, price read, uh, leads to higher gas costs. So gas is number one and front running and mine extractable value are number two. Um, so if you're not familiar, there is front running. So there are bots uh, running in. And when someone is making a trade, an honest trader is making a trade, a bot comes in and steals their slippage, their tolerance on how much the price can shift. And this is basically slip stealing the slippage from a honest trader. So it's theft. Uh, even if some people are not considering it as theft at the moment, maybe they're saying code is law or whatever, but from the perspective of an honest trader, it's theft. So this is on one part, this is front running bots. On the other side, these are even nodes, validator nodes, mining nodes that are themselves extracting value. And so this is a very serious problem. And these causes gas, high gas costs and front running and MEV are leading to a lot of different adverse effects that are detrimental to the whole ecosystem and DeFi especially. So the most obvious effect is trading becomes more effective and this is reducing capital efficiency. We will go into capital efficiency in a minute, but in general, trading becomes more effective, expensive because high gas costs and some people stealing the slippage. And this again leads to centralizing effects. So if people have less capital efficiency, if they're being stolen from um, the community, the economy starts to shift and it starts to shift around this type of value extraction. So for example, there are now services, private mempools that you can pay to hide your transaction from the public mempool. The mempool is where all transactions go before they land in a block on the blockchain. And you can pay to prevent the front running, but it is still costing you money. It might be a little bit less, but it's still costing you money. And this again leads to exclusive clubs of value extractors. So people 
communities, companies with a lot of investment in value extraction, with a lot of know-how and intel in value extraction that are specialized to steal from others. Very exclusive. And the effect is maybe big players can afford this. They say we are paying an additional fee to go into a private mempool, but small users are increasingly priced out. Even if, even, uh, even if they would afford the private mempools, but gas costs alone, hundreds of dollars are pricing out small users uh, from a platform like Ethereum. And so the result is very simple. The original promise of crypto is broken. A permissionless financial system where everyone is treated equally. This promise is broken and it's not no longer valid on Ethereum. So this is why we are saying DeFi is broken. And this is the beginning of our mission. Let's fix DeFi. We want to fix DeFi and so we have to start somewhere. <clears throat> and this is where we start to build our, our vision. <clears throat> and the vision basically stems from the points that we've just discussed. So we want to fix the big issues of DeFi and this is capital efficiency and fairness. We want to build a platform that is capital efficient and fair at the same time. A lot of different platforms are trying to achieve one or the other, but we are not seeing a platform yet that is maximizing for capital efficiency, fairness, and at the same time stays decentralized. So this is what Mangata is. Mangata is an easy and secure DEX to trade all Polkadot and Ethereum assets, and in the future, likely more, without gas costs, and we prevent front running and mine extractable value. That's it. So how do we go there? What's our solution framework? What are the components? This is the Mangata playbook. So the Mangata playbook uh, to summarize what we discussed too far. The end game is capital efficiency. At the end of the day, if everything else is equal, the platform where you pay the least to get the most will be the winner. So the end game is capital efficiency. The way to get there is fairness. Only a platform that treats everyone equally where the playing field is level can be a platform where everyone will use that platform. And we have to have fundamental values that orient ourselves towards the long-term success. And these are Strong tech, strong tokenomics, strong community, and a strong network. And we will now look into each of those four fundamental values. Before we do that, for everyone who is not too uh, deep into capital efficiency, just a few points to give you a basic understanding. Capital efficiency is pay less to get more. So if you pay less gas, good for you. If you pay less slippage, good for you. If you are swapping tokens and you have a very deep liquidity pool, there is less slippage, you get, you get what you pay for. You see the ratio, you pay that amount and you get that amount. Deep liquidity pools, very high capital efficiency and eventually an efficient bonding curve. This goes a little bit into mathematics and a little bit deeper into the technology, but effectively again, is the price what you expect it to be? Do you pay less to get more? This is capital efficiency when we talk about it. Okay, now go into the four chapters. Technology. Mm. And this is the nice part. We need to change the rules of the game. You have seen before high gas costs and mine extractable value. And the issue behind that is actually Ethereum and the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine. And it is limited in the capabilities that it is offering. It is offering a lot, but at the same time, by the basic design of the EVM, there are limitations that we cannot overcome within EVM. So, uh, for example, the capital efficiency is limited by gas alone. Even if there would be no front running in the MEV, still the gas costs alone are reducing capital efficiency because each exchange is asking for an exchange commission. But on top of that, you have to pay the gas. So the gas, makes it less efficient, less capital efficient. Can we remove the gas? And the second thing is, uh, mine extractable value, front running and so on, is reducing the fairness very much. Uh, users are no longer treated equally. There are 
value extractors and uh, the ones that are being value extracted from, even if they just want to be trading. And so we have been looking uh, what are other possible technology stacks that exist. And the one that we found is Substrate. Substrate is the technology that powers Polkadot and Kusama and many more. And it is a very new tech stack. It's cutting edge. It's very innovative. Um, and the changes you can do go much, much deeper. We can build our own chain that is still secured by the Polkadot or Kusama ecosystem. And we can perform changes that go very deep. Substrate itself allows a fast degree of innovation, uh, forkless upgrades, upgrades just by governance. And we can just do so much more with it because of its modular design. And so this allows us to create a blockchain that is optimized for capital efficiency and fairness. A blockchain that is optimized for capital efficiency and fairness. Not only the protocols on top, the blockchain itself is optimized for it. And now you're seeing, you begin to understand where we are going because we are going very deep to the fundamental levels to think about how we can win the end game. Okay. To make it a little bit more specific, um, chapters that we will be offering, and we won't go into detail on all of these now. This will be part of later videos. So the chapters we're touching now is a little bit on the surface, but if you get interested, you can dive deeper, much more, more, more. So number one, we want to establish a no gas economy, just the exchange commission, just the swapping fees, no gas on top for regular trading. We are establishing, establishing proof of liquidity. This is an innovation on top of proof of staking, but instead of staking native tokens, which would be locking your capital, we are staking LP tokens. So we are staking liquidity and the capital can remain in the system, can remain in the pools and can continue to work. We developed Themes protocol, which is a protocol that prevents front running and unextractable value on the consensus level. So uh, it, it improves fairness and it improves capital efficiency. And we are also looking into our chain limit orders and, and much, much more, many more things that we're looking into, but just to give you a taste, looking into tokenomics, chapter number two, um, and we don't go into the full tokenomics, just the way we think about tokenomics. So the token is actually a medium to reward the behavior that supports the network. The network is actually providing a service, a value to everyone. And the token is there to, to mediate the process and uh, support everything that supports the system to give something back. So this is the way we have to construct the tokenomics. We have to consider all the timeframes, not just an initial distribution, but all the timeframes. So how does bootstrapping work? How does the growth stage work and the stability phases and our tokenomics consider all of those phases. And at the end of the day, Hype will go. So token hype, uh, inflated expectations about what a token should be worth will go away, will fade in the future. And so we're considering what is the utility, the fundamental value of the token, and we will go into that. Uh, and if we consider all of those factors, it should create favorable price dynamics on all timeframes, long-term, mid-term and short-term. And to just give you a little bit of a hint, we found a way to have a hard cap a limit on how many tokens there will be in the system and still have infinite rewards for liquidity mining and for staking rewards. And the way we do this is by having algorithmic bind burn. So each exchange, each swap will burn a little bit of our native token, MGX on Kusama, MGA on Polkadot, will burn it, create deflationary pressure, which can create price appreciation and the burnt tokens are now free to be minted again for liquidity mining and for staking rewards. To give you a summary on the token utilities, they can be used in proof of liquidity staking. staking. So only our native token paired against the other token is liquidity that is allowed in proof of liquidity staking. This helps us to establish security for the system. We have a liquidity base layer resulting from this. So there is a lot of MGX, MGA based uh, liquidity 
and it will serve as a medium of exchange for many trade routes. It will facilitate a lot of trade routes that will go through our native token. Algorithmic buy and burn is a utility of the token, is a utility of the network, but it also supports those that support the network by holding the token or using the token and liquidity. And at the end of the day, governance is a very important factor. There is a treasury and it will hold a range of tokens depend, depending on the trading activity. A little bit of the exchange commission goes into the treasury and so the token will be backed by the treasury, uh, so to say. And of course, governance uh, will support proof of liquidity, whitelisting and other things. So this is a roundup of tokenomics. There is much more to see, but I think it gives you uh, an overall picture. So uh, now the next two chapters, this is community and the network. And this is how we, uh, we approach network effects, how we approach growth and how we approach innovation. So the community. The, the basic idea is we need to build a critical mass to succeed. And this means that we need to understand which stakeholder groups are there and how we can align their incentives. And to some extent, this requires that you have a walk me mindset. So we are all going to make it mindset. How can we create a system that supports every stakeholder group in the system? So how can we align the incentives? And this means we have to identify the stakeholder groups. What are their incentives? What are the disincentives? And how can we create alignments? For example, there are traders, liquidity providers, collators, delegators, governance, team, investors, holders, and a few more types of stakeholders. And we need to consider all of them. And the way we can align the incentives, how we can bring them all together is of course by a DAO. And because we are using Substrate technology, Mangata is from day one a DAO, and it will be a community owned DAO within uh, two years latest by the tokenomics alone, because the tokenomics are designed to be in a way to allow progressive decentralization within two years. And this will lead to the community owning the platform, owning the system. And what this will require is that there will be active governance by the community, for the community. And the community has to steer this thing like a business. So we need to learn uh, as a community, how governance works, how we can work together, how we make proposals and what are the most important things. And so the way we do this is by creating a shared mental model about our system. For example, the Mangata playbook is part of the shared mental model. It gives you an understanding of what we are going to achieve. Uh, and the most important communication platforms for this are Discord, because this is where governance and research can happen every day. This is our community calls, which gives us the chance to deep dive into topics, to build our understanding and really talk with each other about it. And of course, co-creating content. For example, the Mangata playbook here, my idea is to have it in a lot of different uh, languages, uh, to have content in a lot of different languages, because uh, this helps everyone understand it in the language uh, and also helps us talk to each other about it. And of course, we're having fun. So this is Themis, this is uh, our icon. She is the Greek goddess of uh, fairness, so to say. Um, and this is a solar punk variation because solar punk is a genre of art that very much uh, resonates with the values we're having in creating a more fair system for everyone. Okay, last chapter, the network. So the idea is that our success correlates with the success of other ecosystem partners. And this is overall the Dotsama ecosystem because the more successful it is, the more interaction there will be uh, at Mangata. It will be uh, the success of bridges and channels. So bridges to other ecosystems and channels to other parachains. And of course, user experience is extremely important because the easier it is to trade, the easier it is to use the platform, the more inviting it will be to the general uh, public. And so our first task is to create network effects, to build strong relationships with our network. That means connecting bridges, building bridges to other ecosystems, all of them, open up channels to other parachains, 
all of them, and to hold other ecosystem tokens in the treasury. If there are partners that are very important to us, we should hold ecosystems tokens so that we can have a say a little bit in their governance, take our part in being a good partner in the ecosystem. This is where we want to go. And from this alone, um, you're now getting a picture. And I understand it takes time to get all this in. It took me also a lot of time, um, but um, we have time and you can be part of the journey. And so to show you a little bit of where we will be going in the next months this year, um, what is the big picture? First of all, we launch Mangata X on Kusama. That's the first job. And this means opening channels, opening bridges, bootstrapping, MGX the token, and to grow the liquidity, to prove our point that we can establish ourselves, get a foot in the door, and even start rolling out the thing. We want to launch with the minimum viable product. So the features that we will be talking about in the next videos, next blog posts, and that we already have talked about, you can read about it in the blog. Uh, we launch them and we stabilize them. So there can be bugs, there can be issues, we have to fix them. Uh, we have a very high degree of quality assurance within our team. We tend to take our time, fix the issues and then move forward. And the last part is to grow the community, of course. So this is your chance to get in early with the ecosystem and be part of this. Be part of a community that, that really tackles the big issue, big issues of DeFi. Um, so, and once we did this, our job is to become an established project. project. So we have to grow the respect for Magata in the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem and build strong relationships with other projects. This will establish us further and give us more leverage to grow. And once we have done that, once we have worked ourselves up in the ranks, we will launch Magata on Polkadot, um, which will be our next big step. So this is the overall roadmap. Um, Whoa. <laughs> and uh, this is the roadmap for Mangata X. So very briefly, we're in January right now. We're growing the community, having the translation project and making, getting the word out. In February, we will have the auction. This is our chance to get into the ecosystem to onboard as a parachain. March and April, we'll have the bootstrap sequence, the launch sequence, the token generation event, opening channels, bootstrapping the pool and transitioning governance and actually get the thing rolling. And once that happens, more innovation, more integration, more user experience, and of course, opening channels and bridges. So that's the plan. If you want to get involved, these are the next steps. Visit Mangata Finance, visit the blog, read everything. Subscribe also to the newsletter and follow us on Twitter and YouTube to stay in the loop, stay informed. And if you really want to become part of the thing, come join us in Discord, join us in Telegram, join us on Reddit, and especially in Discord, be part of the discussion. We want to have you with us. Uh, if you followed along so far, you would be an excellent fit, I think, uh, and it, I would be very happy to have you on Discord. So if you enjoyed this, um, may the, the airwell Bless you with infinite rewards. Uh, thank you for watching and see you soon.